Crystal, I met you for the first time two years ago. How have you been since then? Doing a little better. Still trying to get off the street and everything, but... Okay. You're, you're, are you, do you think you're better, worse, or the same as last time, two years ago? I said a little better. A little bit better? Yeah. Uh, what type of band is that around your wrist? Oh, hospital band. Hospital band. You were in there recently? Yeah, like three days ago. What happened? They, I have a hernia, I think, right here, they said. You have one right now? Yeah. Make it, there's a big old lump right here, so. Is, do they say they're going to do surgery, or? They really didn't care, you know, because I'm homeless, so they really treat you different. So. Okay. Does it cause you pain? Very. Yeah. That's probably why you went the first place, huh? Because it was yeah. painful? Yeah, but they didn't do anything, so. They didn't do anything at all? Maybe they feel it's not life-threatening. That's why they didn't do anything. Yeah, but they also treat us different because we're homeless. You know, we do drugs, so... I mean... No insurance? I have insurance, but, like... Just, it's different when... How they treat us compared to somebody that's not homeless and on drugs, you know? Why do you think that is? Because... People are very... What's the word? Sterile? You can't think of the word sterile. Stereotypical? Yeah. I mean, stereotype, they stereotype? Yeah. So, like, they just judge, you know? So, they think we do it to ourselves pretty much. And, like, that's not the case, not everybody, so. I mean. Oh, they just. Oh. How old are you now? 32. I'll be 33 this year. Have you gone to any treatment at all in those two years? No. No treatment? No. I've talked about it, but I mean, obviously I haven't done it yet, but... What do you think holds you back? To be honest, being sick. Being sick? Mm -hmm. The withdrawals? Yeah. That's what keeps you away from treatment center? Pretty much. I've been doing it so long, so... How long have you been doing it? 15 years. 15 years? What was the first substance? The original Roxy's. Roxy's. Like the perks, yeah. Those yeah. are probably the real ones, right? Yeah. Those are for the yeah. prescribed ones. Like from the and hospital. From the they, hospital, yeah. they prescribe it to a grandma, and somebody steals it from the cabinet, and well, they I sell them. Well, I got them. it for my baby when I had my baby, so. When you have your my children? My first kid, yeah. The doctor prescribed them? For my C-section. For your C-section, mm -hmm. and then you started abusing them? Pretty much. Or got addicted to them? Mm -hmm. Okay, and at some point, you switched to blues from the street? From then, I was on news for nine years, I think, ten years, and then I had my second daughter and started heroin, and then the past, what, two, three years, I've been back on blues. Where are your children at? Um, my one daughter's in Bullhead, my other one's in Mesa, I think. Like the state, or your family, or the dad's so family? my first one's with family, and then my second one out here is in the state. Do you ever miss your children? You think oh, yeah. about them? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Always. I don't really know my second one, but I definitely know my first one. I, mean, I raised her for a little while, so. The little scar on the right, on your right arm, what happened there? Two of them? Mm -hmm. You're injecting? Yeah, I was muscling instead of hitting through a vein. I was just putting in my skin. Muscling means you go straight to the muscle? Just like straight in the skin instead of like hitting a vein, you know? And that damages your muscle, obviously. Well, yeah, and it causes abscesses, which caused me to get MRSA, and yeah. So that's been there for about 10 years? Four years. Four I had, years. I had it in my last video. Four years. Mm -hmm. So you've been, to, you've been, it's like a variety of stuff that you've been yeah. on, right? Yeah. Well, the only main two things are uh, the pills and hair, uh, heroin. H, got it. Yeah. Which of of all everything you've ever used in your life, what's the strongest? I don't know because my tolerance is really high. Say that again. My tolerance is really high, so I'd probably have to say. I don't know. They're about the same, I think. You know. Okay. Like. I've talked to people that uh. They did H for twenty, thirty years, and then uh. So why'd you stop? It got too expensive, right? And it's hard to, harder to find H. But, and, 
and you know using the needle and stuff like that but blues are everywhere they're cheaper uh, and the high is stronger for blues for that person particularly right because right, yeah. everybody's different everybody's yeah. tolerance is different yeah. everybody's experience is different sure. and uh they just say the di biggest difference is that for blues it doesn't last as long like whereas facts. for h boom you're you're out for facts, yeah. you know hours or whatever right well, that's like six seven eight hours with the blue you have to go like every probably 30 minutes to an right. hour but it's more mindset also you know because you really don't get sick within that 30 minutes it's like more your mind just wanting that you know like it probably takes about a good three four hours before you start getting sick okay honestly like but yeah it's just a habit you know and it's that mindset we want to just so people when they say they're sick within like 30 minutes yeah. no yeah. how many because you have such a high tolerance how many pills do you need per day Me probably at least like ten to fifteen. Okay. What's the maximum you've ever done in one day? <laughs> to be honest, myself probably like a fifty pack. Fifty by yourself? Mm. Yeah, some people have told me a hundred, yeah. hundred and fifty. I believe it. I, I don't I didn't do two hundred because I couldn't afford it. Didn't have, you know, money for right. two hundred. Right. And and different people have told me. Right. So yeah. that's how I kinda know it's true, right? And that's again that's speaking to the levels of tolerance. Exactly. Right, and let yeah. me ask you this. Speaking of tolerance, when somebody gets clean, okay, mm. let's just say you got clean for six months, a year, mm. and then you relapsed. Come out to the streets, you put two or three on a tray, right? Two or three mm. pills on on foil, smoke them. You haven't smoked in a year, mind you. You're you're, you're kind of clean. Do you would you agree that that's the most dangerous time for you? Oh yeah, anytime that you get that like amount of time, whether it's a month or a year, or whatever, you got that time frame of being clean from doing every day constantly to going a time period without. Oh yeah. Very uh, dangerous, right? Your body oh, yeah. flips out. I don't know how many people I've had to Narcan and bring back like because of stuff like that. Oh yeah. That scenario, they're clean, they've been out out of the game for a while, they've been locked up for a month, two Even months, three if it's months. Like a week or two, you know, it's just your body finally got that out of you you know and yeah. then you go back to it like you thought like okay well i was only weak so i'm gonna go back to my normal and your body's not up to that you know so yeah, yeah definitely that's very dangerous right definitely yeah we, i've heard of of so many people being lost that way yeah yeah i really i don't know how many how many people i've had to help come back and yeah. because of stuff like that or they just even if it's not getting like clean for a minute it's just them trying to like do more than they think they, they think they can do more than they can really you know so like they'll do it or they'll do petty powder and that that totally makes a difference like petty powder and perks no like that petty powder is what's really doing it okay and uh how are you staying safe out here you're all by yourself you're like gosh you're like are you five foot not even <laughs> four eleven four ten four nine four nine you're tiny you're little uh, how, how are you staying safe being out here by yourself? It's so dangerous. You're literally out here in the streets every day, every night. Aren't you scared? Yeah, no, like, honestly, like, I don't leave my block. And, like, I know I have so many people like that I know over here because, like, I've been here so long. So, I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I'm not, like, if I go, like, in a different area, probably. But, like, if I just stay, like, here in my area where I'm comfortable. You feel comfortable? Yeah, I know so many people literally like right here. I've been here for a few years, so like I I know if I really if something went down, I could have somebody that would be right there, you know. So yeah, I'm not I'm not scared here. But if I were to go to a different area, oh yeah, I probably wouldn't. I'd because probably be you wouldn't know that area, right? And I wouldn't know people or anything. So yeah, I'd probably definitely be uncomfortable and scared. Like, but here, I don't know. I'm not scared. It's like you're a you're a survivor. Whatever thr life throws at you, you, you survive it. You try to overcome it, right? Yeah. When do you think you'll survive and overcome this addiction? Honestly, hopefully sooner than later. Like. Have you hit rock bottom? What do you consider rock bottom? Everybody's rock bottom is different. Right. Me personally living out here on the street, that'd be my rock bottom. Right. But again, I don't I don't understand addiction, right? Right. Sure. Uh, so you've been out here for years, right? right. Years, years. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. 
long as I want to know, like, because every day there's always something different, you know, like, issues and struggle, and, like, I'll be like, I'm done, but, like, I don't know, I guess when that rock bottom comes, I'll know, you know, like, right now, like, I definitely want it, but it's the main thing I don't want to get sick, like, I don't. So here's one thing I do know about hernia. You need to go to them and say, hey, come and patch me up or whatever, because that's going to that's gonna continue to grow. It's going to protrude, like hang out of your belly and stuff, okay? I've seen that. What do you mean patch me up? They need to go in there and fix you up, whatever they need to do, you know, because that's just going to grow, continue to grow, and it's dangerous. You shouldn't. See, like, uh, I have a friend who works at the county hospital. He's yeah. a surgeon, and he told me it was a hernia. But I was going to go to the hospital. He told me no, but I still went. He told me I should wait till it starts protruding out. Like, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think I should, but he said that's when I should go. But, like, I don't know. It hurts. Like, it's, they have my eat, move. Like, it just. And when I went, they didn't. They looked at something totally different. They said I had a, um, what did they say? I wish I had my paperwork. Um, just, like, stomach, abdominal pain. They said that's it. Like, okay. So. But, yeah. um. Uh, they didn't give you medication or anything? Uh, Tylenol. Tylenol? Yeah. They're kind of scared to prescribe stuff to you, huh? Cause they I, don't, probably I don't blame them. Yeah, you know? Because it is obviously on my record, you know, because I've been to the hospital to get them purposely before, you know? So right. it's on my record, and I don't blame them. And I wasn't going for that either, you right, know? Like, right, But I wasn't even trying. I just I wanted to fix what's wrong, so. Yeah. But Tylenol. Okay. Uh, Crystal, it was really nice seeing you. Uh, it's been two years, a little yeah. over two years, but uh, please stay safe, okay? Thank you. Please uh, take care of yourself. Uh, it's it's just I wish I was seeing you under better circumstances, okay? Thank you. Thank you. You will next time, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll see. Okay, okay. we'll stay Thank in you. contact. Okay. All right. Talk Thank to you, you soon.